Hey guys, I'm Nathan from Arms and Armor. Today we're going to be looking at how pole axes work. So I've suited up in my harness and Ian from the shop is going to help me while we examine how these things actually interact with period armor. <laughs> All right, so I've got our knightly pole axe here, which is a replica of one that's in the Wallace collection. We actually, orders on these are on hold right now as we kind of do a little re-engineering and fulfill our backlog, but it's a beautiful piece. This is actually the ax that a uh, certain internet reviewer broke uh, a few years ago that was just slightly bent that we fix, and I'm gonna tell you why that's not actually a problem with how these things work. But to begin with, these hammers are something that you use relatively close in. Interestingly, when you're fighting with these, you're choked up more than you would be with a sword. You have less reach in general than you would with a sword. So the manuscripts in which these are being fought with show a grip in the middle of the hammer rather than way down at the end, right? We're not swinging these from way out here. Instead, we're fighting close and we're striking using our hips uh, for strikes, but more than that, these aren't just bludgeoning instruments. In fact, these are highly technical uh, weapons for dueling in armor, especially this one, this is a high-end weapon. And one of the things I want you to look at is the shape of the ax, right? The ends of this ax, we actually took a mold uh, off of the original uh, back in the day in the Wallace collection, so this is quite accurate. Uh, these are hooks just like on many pole arms, right? All kinds of pole arms have hooks on them for grabbing. And this one is particularly good at grabbing mail and the articulations between pieces of armor. So I'm gonna have I in here, he comes in. Say hi, Ian. Oh. Come this way a little more. Oh. There he is. Oh. So here's this. And so I'm just gonna have him hook that blade onto my armor to show how he can pull me. So put it up over. Yeah, I cannot escape this. This is like a fish hook, right? Quite he can just pull me. And now on the front, if you plant this post here, that obviously is a good thing to do, right? But if you miss, you can also have the top of that ax and it really sticks into the mail. It grabs right a hold of it. Uh, it also can grab onto, right, fans on the armor, you can pull, and really, when you're fighting in armor, it's a wrestling match, you're trying to break the other person's armor and throw them to the ground, right? This is most of what you're doing, not big double-handed swings on these things. And that's true for other hammers, right? This is our Burgundian Polax, and this is one that we started offering in hardened 4140 uh, steel, operates in a similar way, right? It hooks and it pushes. Now the hammer obviously is for hammering people, but these long spikes on the hammer also are made to gain purchase on the armor, right? If this comes down and he hits me, instead of just glancing off, it grips and transfers that force to my body, right? It's a really uh, highly developed technology. So the last one that I have here to show you is this Beck de Corbin, right, that we make. Similar deal, right? This raven's beak and this kind of lucerne hammer back also hook. This one could go right in here on my breastplate, right? This spike, even though it's leaf-shaped, does the same thing, right? It's a spear, uh, essentially, and you can pull. One of the things that the manuscripts say to do is to, uh, right, if he strikes at you, I strike his hammer aside, and the heads will go low, because they're pretty heavy. When they go low, you can use these spikes, or these side spikes, or the hook on the pole axe to put it behind their knee and you can pull them and break their structure by pulling it behind their knee. We're doing this at training this past weekend, taking that nightly pole ax 
and putting it behind the knee and it's sharp, right? Just to show how compelling that is and how it breaks your structure. You end up just hopping on one foot while you're pulled along uh, with that thing. So now I'll do a couple videos of smashing some armor, not me because I don't want to die and these are made for killing people in armor, uh, but we'll watch some beauty shots. Yeah, so this is the hammer that on YouTube was used to really wail on something and the lane gets bent a little bit when he hit it as hard as he could. He just straightened it right back out, which is exactly what would happen in period, right? You guys are sword fighters and such like that. You know that you can break weapons. Um, these, if you were in an actual duel with someone, right? It's mostly close work that you're doing. You want this thing to be relatively light and maneuverable, right? This rondel that protects my hand is at center balance for the piece, right? Which means that this is where you're supposed to hold it and this is how you're supposed to strike, right? If you knocked your opponent on the ground and you wound up with a giant Hail Mary crushing ass blow, you could do that, but I don't think you'd be surprised if your hammer needed a little bit of repair <laughs> after you massacred an, on, an armored knight with it, right? So that's just the way these things work. Uh, I'm gonna show you hitting this piece of armor uh, from our friend Josh Davis at Davis Reproductions. It's a hardened uh, 16 gauge steel Gothic pauldron and we'll see what happens. Safety third. Ready? Hammer is perfectly fine. Right. Some good smashing. It uh, hit these articulations right here. So this is that strike across these three lames. Pretty tough, low, right? So yeah, you could beat someone to death with it, but mostly this thing's a crowbar and a spear more than you know, a sledgehammer for breaking rocks because you can't fight with a sledgehammer because you can't actually move, right? People get out of the way. So let's see, I'll hit it with that, uh, the Lucerne hammer too. Right, the Beck de Corbin uh, Lucerne hammer generally from Lucerne, right? There's a hammer with a spiky back end on it. So it's a generic category. Uh, we'll see how this one goes. This was a prototype of our hammer from back in the day. We have tons of pole arms laying around, so we might as well use it. That's why this top spike isn't perfectly straight. Uh, it was a, a brain explosion job rather than a, something for a customer. So let's see. Yeah, so this right, goes between the lames and pries them apart. It breaks articulations. It's a hook, it's a spear, it's a hammer. They work great. Yeah, if you hit something absolutely as hard as you can with one, you might break it. And that's what happened in period as well. It might need repair. Just like if you take your nice sword and hit right an armored knight as hard as you can, your sword's gonna need some, some work after that, uh, but it still worked. So check out our pole arms. I hope you enjoyed this. I had a fun time putting on my armor during the middle of the day I don't usually get to, although it was freezing cold because it was in my truck overnight. It's about 10 degrees out here. Definitely cooled me off. All right, thanks a lot. See you next time.